Aya Love, my second theatre review. Oh my god, I'm so excited about this one. Grab yourself a brew and let's get going. The Encounter by Simon McBurney, produced by Theatre de Complicité and written, performed and directed by Simon. I feel incredibly passionate about this show. It was quite revolutionary at the time in terms of how theatre was moving with technology and I still feel that way now having watched it last night on Complicité's YouTube channel. There's lots of um, videos about how they made it and it's just fascinating to watch. So if you're interested, I will post the link below to their YouTube channel. Simon McBurney is the artistic director of Theatre de Complicité and uh, I've got a huge amount of admiration for him as, as a creative soul. He is incredible. I genuinely believe he is one of the most intelligent and inquisitive uh, artists in our industry. He's just amazing. And so when I saw the encounter I not only was it my first ever visit to the Barbican which is an amazing theatre but I was very very excited to see how he would tell this particular story. So the play is based on a book by Petru Popescu which tells the story of a photographer called Lauren McIntyre and his visit to the Amazonian jungle. He's going around getting these amazing shots of, of wildlife, of nature, and he stumbles across an indigenous tribe of people. And it's kind of, from that point onwards, the story is essentially about his journey with them because he spent quite a long time with them without knowing. The thing I found most fascinating, I think, was the non-verbal communication between him and the tribe's leader who he names Barnacle because he's got barnacle shells on his ankles and on his knees. Even though this story has been adapted for stage, the story itself sounds so interesting. I will definitely be reading that book. The whole show is an experience. And when you go into the theatre, there are headphones on each seat in the, in the entire theatre. So that even that alone is such a huge achievement sound wise. Uh, it's something that I'd never experienced before. And you listen to pretty much all of the show through these headphones. So it feels like Simon's sort of uh charismatic yet soothing tones are right in the middle of your head and it feels like your consciousness which is quite amazing the story itself runs parallel to uh other themes within it which are time consciousness and your imagination i would say so the indigenous tribe that lauren mcintyre meets are called the mayaruna tribe and they're called the cat people um I found it quite interesting uh, watching it for the first time because I didn't really have much knowledge of indigenous tribes and something that is of paramount importance throughout the show is this sort of awareness we have of these people. The fact that they live completely isolated from our civilised world. But the one thing that kind of hit me was how much our lives affect them because we are essentially destroying the Amazonian rainforest and that is their home and you know things like fossil fuels we rely so much on them that again it's ruining their home the place that they live and it they have been almost forced to become accustomed to a different consciousness a different way of life as well as their you know ritualistic way of life too that's quite sad in a way because we've done that i think the show uh is a great way of making people aware of that and also prompting them into action about it so i just briefly mentioned uh the theme of consciousness and that is something that runs throughout the entirety of the play and as well as that, I think there are themes of what we believe to be real, what we believe to be fiction and 
I think generally storytelling after not only doing the Q&A after that particular performance back in 2018, but also yesterday, um, which was online and arranged by Complicite, um, it became quite poignant to me how storytelling isn't about the person who's telling the story, it's about the people who listen. And if the people who have seen this production and watched this production online choose to uh, really pay attention to what they've listened to, then that's when really positive change could happen. So that's that's amazing that they that complicity have been able to achieve that. So the stage is set up with uh, microphones of various kinds. There is a binaural head which is a microphone that registers space. So it's really, really clever the way they use that throughout the show. And aside from that, there's water bottles and random little things uh, just on the stage. And we're not really sure why, but later on we find those to be sound effects used to tell this story as Simon McBurney tells it through our headphones basically he speaks to us directly something i found really interesting from yesterday's q a was how simon experienced a closeness with the audience because of how intently they were listening he explained that he's never really experienced it to that degree before which i found really interesting as well maybe this is a way we can move forward in theater maybe it's something uh to do with how we take in information i do think as well that Simon is such a excellent storyteller that he was able to captivate the audience in a very short space of time. So for the next two hours, which the show goes straight through as well, for the next two hours, he has your attention wholeheartedly. And I think to do that, he was he used the stage and the tools he his team had so, so well. That is, it's just a credit to them as a company, really, and how sort of innovative they are. After reading uh, Petru's book, Simon himself, with a team of people, had gone to the Amazon to to essentially meet an, in, an indigenous tribe. He met the Kwikoro tribe and he himself took part in some of these rituals and uh, all the time there's this... There's this essence of uh, time and they have a completely different idea of what time is. I think the moment for me where I really felt like I'd hit the next level of concentration when watching and listening to the show was when Simon's daughter had come into the room it was a pre-recording whilst he was working on the show at home in the year prior and she couldn't sleep and she insisted that he do the amazon jungles animal sounds with a loop pedal he creates all of the sounds of the amazon's animals with his with his own body with his mouth and by the end of it you have this soundscape of Amaz like the amazonian jungle it's it's just incredible and from that point onwards the story is told and he takes on this voice of lauren mcintyre on stage it's bare it's almost bare but you believe it to be the jungle and you believe him to be surrounded by these indigenous people as the story goes on and I think that's incredible that's something that in our imagination we've let ourselves go to that place and we now believe that that is real but actually take a step back we've got headphones in we're listening to Simon tell a story and on the stage is loads of water bottles and loads of videotape it without its casing in the book and in the play lauren has as i mentioned before unverbal communication with the uh tribe's leader barnacle i find that quite fascinating because he's he sort of 
it becomes a thing of feeling the thoughts and he hears barnacles responses in his mind and they have this unverbal communication which they speak of as the old language and i find that amazing like i remember watching it again last night thinking i want to try this like i want to see if it works because that's something that we can't comprehend because obviously all our communication really is verbal for most of us that was that was a really interesting factor of it for me another thing is uh moments of connection between Lauren and the Mayaruna people uh, in terms of time and their relationship to time. He speaks about this uh, little boy in the tribe who turns out to be Barnacle's son. Essentially, he devises a little sort of rain dance he says that it's almost an interpretation of reality. I found that interesting because he then speaks about time and we, as, as a race, a human race, have learned to dance. So that, in a way, unites us. We rely on the Amazon as much as they do, really, if not more. It is true that the Amazon is the sort of lungs of the earth and... A, you know a fifth of the world's what fresh water is in the amazon so i think all the speak of our culture and our materialism if we were to sacrifice that we could Im it not only improve ourselves but improve life for them as well there's a moment in the show where lauren goes through a ritual with these people and they essentially take all these things that they've made from just from plants and what they have um, and they burn them they sacrifice them and it they barnacle tells uh lauren that they're going back to the beginning and there's this mention of the beginning the beginning a lot throughout and lauren's like well how can you go back to the beginning and i think that was more a thing of a new beginning a new way of thinking and being and a new consciousness and i think these people through their rituals and through their connection with the earth and you know the sun the moon the gods that kind of thing they are able to achieve that and it just made me wonder could we reach that in such a sort of modern civilization not sure these people, they've had to become accustomed to us intervening with their lives. And so they kind of have this sort of double consciousness in a way. They have, like I mentioned before, their rituals, their simple way of life. And then they have their life where we are involved. Um, and a lot of them have uh, progressed because of that. They now have schools, they have um filmmakers for example takuma quikoro who was in the uh q a with simon last night he spoke in his language and a translator explained to us what he was saying he summed up that the show really portrayed their view of us and in a way how scary we can be to them one big question that really stuck with me yesterday after watching it again after doing the second q a was have we not learned that if we hurt nature we also hurt ourselves i think that is a poignant question as we move forward and especially in these times of lockdown whilst we see nature really sort of almost in a way coming back to life like think of how many times you've seen uh lakes and rivers much clearer than they were before you've got animals coming into the city center because they they are able to and we are letting them and we're listening to our planet again so i think that's something that we need to take forward definitely at the end of the performance simon mentions the whole team that are behind the show and that it isn't just him on stage doing all of this and he 
does a special mention to his sound operators. They are musicians, they are characters, and they play with him in terms of the sound. And I think for me, how momentous the sound design was on this show was probably something that I will not forget anytime soon. It is true that Theatre de Complicité are one of the most influential theatre companies in the UK and I think they're almost one step ahead. They are taking risks, they are being bold, they are saying right we have these questions that we're going to answer on stage, how can we do that in the most creative and innovative ways and that is what I love about this company. I was introduced to them in my third year of uh, Lippa so that was my gosh that was four years ago I think <laughs> um, and since then I've been such a huge fan of their work so I urge you uh, to go and check out the making of the show. I I can't recommend it enough. My final sort of note on the show is not only is the story told in such a way that you you feel every moment of it, um, but I think with storytelling comes this sense of connection and community. There's something very powerful in it and it is something that will continue to exist as long as we uh, as long as we exist as long as there are people to listen and i love that the show begins ends and has throughout uh, interruptions from simon's daughter that wants to have a story told to her because that's how we learn as human beings we listen we listen to stories i feel like the show kind of goes full circle in a way yeah amazing thank you so so much for watching this show means a lot to me um i think it was a huge learning curve when i went to see it it kind of expanded my mind so much and i think re-watching it yesterday and uh being a part of the q a with simon with takuma and his guests i, I think it enlightened me it, it it expanded my mind so much and so for that I'll forever be grateful. Hence why I'm wearing a t-shirt because I love the show so much and I'm also going to show you the back of it because it's got the binaural head. Ah! I'm going to put the link to Petru Popescu's book just below so you can have a read if you'd like to. I, I know that I'm definitely going to give it a read. Last but no means least, I am going to include the Kukuru Community's fundraising link uh, to help their community resist COVID-19. It's really important that we help them as much as we are able to um, because they are the guardians of, of our rainforest, of our Amazonian jungle, so we definitely should. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and like, subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you again very soon. Mwah!